I'm Sharon Stiles, and I live in Sacramento, California. What started off as a journey to find my family history led to my ancestral home in a small Texas town, a forgotten cemetery, and a rich history of African Americans in Central Texas. The people and history of Bull Hill Cemetery was nearly forgotten. Thankfully, a small group of dedicated people and the citizens of Marlin, Texas would not allow their stories to remain untold. In order to understand the people who died here, you must first understand the people who lived here. If you look at the history of Marlin back on the very early beginnings, it was a very flourishing community. Marlin's history links to Fort Milan, which was established in 1834. The fort was eventually abandoned. In the 1850s, slave owner Churchill Jones purchased a large area of land and moved his entire family and slaves to the area. Emancipation changed the economy. African-American farmers would be the backbone of Marlin's community. Slave owner Churchill Jones had been ordered to give land to his formerly enslaved workers as a condition of his return to citizenship in the United States after the Civil War. That land remained in the families for generations. For most families of Marlin, their roots can be traced back to when the city was established. Milton Scruggs left Marlin more than 60 years ago. Now living in Sacramento, he remembers what life was like in those days that used to be. <laughs> we were mainly all, what you might call, family oriented. Because uh, most of the people in the area were, to some degree, associated with each other. And I could leave from one person's house, and if it was too late for me to go back home, I could spend the night, no problem. The, the union between the churches, the school, and the community was quite different from it, what it is today. So everybody virtually knew everyone else. Everybody just uh, played the role that they were called upon to play. My parents were high school sweethearts. Both of them were the children of farm families who lived in different communities outside the city limits of Marlin. Eventually, both their families moved into the city and they lived in the same neighborhood. My dad was the oldest of six children. He was drafted into the Korean War. Before leaving, he asked my mother to wait for him. After being honorably discharged in 1952, he came back to Marlin, they got married, and two days later caught a train to California. My parents would become part of the largest migration within the borders of America. It was between 1915 and 1970, nearly six million African Americans left the South headed north or west in search of true freedom. With all that was happening in Marlin, Texas for African Americans, there was a burden of the South they could not escape. For my parents, that would lead them to California. Over the years, I had questions and they would answer them up to a point. When they reached that point, I knew not to ask any more questions. Our parents, like many, wanted to shield and protect us from the negative aspects of the childhoods they left behind. They wanted us to be free of that burden for a while longer. In 1980, I moved to Fort Worth, Texas and slowly learned the answers to those childhood questions, which led to even more questions. What do you guys want to do? During that period, my niece called from California and asked for help with a school project. The first time I asked my aunt to gather information for the family, I remember I was in the seventh or eighth grade and it was for a school project. We had to do a family tree and things like that. And I remember the teacher saying, you'll need this later. This will be important information that you'll be glad that you gathered. I collected all of my father's information and all of my mother's information and then I sent it back to California for her school project and I sort of put it away and forgot about it. The second time I contacted my aunt uh, for information about the family, um, it was my first year in college and in the project was to get a family tree. So the family information along with the medical history as much as we can find out about our families. So I pulled out that same information and sent it back to her for her project. But I had a thought that I would go ahead and videotape my grandmother. My name 
name is Mary Lillian Johnson, Mary Lillian Paul Johnson. I grew up on the farm, and uh, I was the oldest child of eight. The my moment that interview began, people, unbeknownst to me, my grandmother's grandmother words would answer questions I never knew to ask. Me. 